Well, good morning or good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our uh, parent meeting, uh, our virtual parent meeting for June 20, June 2nd, 2021, our last one of the school year. We will um, have another one in July and in August just to keep our, um, our new tradition of the first Wednesday of every month having a, having a parent meeting so we can keep that consistent communication with you. Um, so also this is a, one of two meetings where we invite board members to participate and to join, um, to listen in and for parents to have a chance to ask questions. So uh, we will leave time for that at the end as well. Uh, we do have Mr. Norm McGee here. So um, he's part of our board of directors. And uh, of course, Dr. Tabia Jones, our president and CEO, also a member of the board. And Terry Schweitzer is a board director. Uh, he's also our uh, president of um, Felicia Services Inc. FSI. Um, who, who works with us as well and is our uh, senior ministry advisor. So welcome and uh, thank you for attending. Okay, so enrollment update. Um, yesterday started the June enrollment period. So there are some spaces available, but we do now have two grades that are full, which means 50 kids, first and seventh grades are full, which is fantastic. Um, I expect more grades to join that list uh, as we verify and confirm applications. Uh, they do keep coming in, but parents, if you are if you know people who are looking for uh, a quality school and a family type atmosphere here at SJA, um, send them our way. They can uh, go to our website and fill out the application for the choice program um, through our website. So do that, and if you are a returning uh, parent and haven't done so yet, you still have a chance to do it in June and July. Um, but I have a feeling that you won't be able to um, wait until August this time around. Uh, if you do, I think you're kind of uh, playing a game of chance. So um, I would get those applications in now so that you don't lose your seat. Uh, and as we've explained throughout the year, returning SJA families have preference over non-SJA families. So uh, if, if there's a spot available, let's say in fourth grade, um, and you apply in June, you will have preference to get that spot. But uh, as is the case in first and seventh grade now, if you are a returning student uh, or returning parent and haven't um, filled that in, you'll have to be put on the waiting list. Uh, if one of those families decides not to attend, uh, we can get you in. But um, so use that preference that you have right now for the other grades um, to get re-enrolled for next year. Okay, I just wanna um, also articulate the plan for next week. We have uh, you know, our school issued Chromebooks and um, chargers and covers um, and that we you know, distributed in the fall. Uh, please um, follow this schedule to, to return them next week. The only exception to that is this coming Friday, we have uh, the eighth graders will be uh, turning those in, theirs in. And when they turn them in on 16th Street, we'll um, give them their cap and tassel for, their, for the commencement parade, as well as a, a, just a, a fun bag of, of treats and goodies for the end of the year. Um, so uh, drop those off, eighth graders, um, preferably between 9.30 and 10.30, so you can, you know, go around the corner and join the parade, which is from 10 to 11. Um, and then the rest of the grades, please follow the schedule. So uh, on Monday, um, it'll be from eight to 12 p.m. for K-5 first and second grades. For Tuesday, it'll be third, fourth and fifth grades and Wednesday, sixth and seventh grades. So please turn those in and, um, and follow the schedule. Uh, if you have siblings, please come on the oldest child's day. That'll help with traffic. So for example, if your oldest child is in sixth grade and you have two other younger children, you can bring all of those devices in on Wednesday. Uh, only eighth graders can turn their technology in on Friday. And uh, each child should return um, the following thing is Chromebook, charging cord and soft cover. So tenemos la información en español también. Cada niño en la semana que viene debe entregar el Chromebook, la cuerda y la cubierta. Y estos días son lunes, martes, miércoles allí. Um, y para estos grados cada día. So por favor, 
sigue este horario para um, entregar la tecnología de la escuela. Ok, en algunas cosas de, de la escuela de verano, some things about summer school. Uh, it's the June 14th through July 16th, so cinco semanas, five weeks, uh, entre estas fechas aquí. Uh, el, hora, el horario es desde las 8 de la mañana hasta las 12 y media, so from 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. We do provide breakfast and snack, but not lunch. So vamos a provenir uh, el, el desayuno y el, uh, algunos bocadillos, pero no almuerzo. Y hay dos opciones para la, para la escuela de verano, virtual o en persona. We have two options. You can sign up for virtual or in-person summer school. Uh, right now, we have la, la listas son llenas. The, the lists are, are full right now. Uh, but si tienes interés, puedes llamar a la, de, a la oficina um, para poner en la lista de espera. If you're interested, um, you can call the office and put your name on the waiting list. But right now, uh, we have our rooms full. But again, once it starts, if people don't show up that said they're going to, there could be some spaces that open up. Um, okay, so parent survey responses. I wanted to show you some of this. Um, este, uh, las respuestas del, del um, de la, de la entrevista de padres de la semana pasada. So here is the screen uh, for, or here are the responses for the last uh, week's parent survey. Uh, as is normal, we, we have pretty strong um, agreement to these questions. So there's a strong sense of community in SJA. Y el español está aquí en la, um, en la uh, escrito aquí uh, para leer. So strong agreement here. Uh, again, whenever there is disagreement, I encourage those who, who disagreed with these statements to please um, communicate with us so we can figure out how to uh, serve you better as well. The Felician sisters' presence and heritage at SJA are important to me. Um, again, most people are agreeing with that, and 43% um, strongly agree, which is great. We are very proud of that heritage. And then talking about relationships, which are very important to us. So having a pot, you have a positive relationship with your classroom teacher. Uh, most people agreed to that. And again, for the few that did not, please uh, communicate with us to help us uh, serve you better. I have a positive relationship with the principal, me, Mr. Hansen. Uh, pretty strong response there. Same with uh, the assistant principal, Mrs. Arboleda, and with our office team, Ms. Amaro Lopez and Mrs. Rios. Um, stronger agreement there, and I, I'm not surprised. They're amazing, so <laughs> we have a great office team. Um, but again, please communicate with us. Uh, I, I know we can't always make everyone happy in every single situation, but um, we want to hear from you and, and try to work with you. Uh, to make that as as, high, as strong as possible. And then talking about academics, SJA provides high quality instruction, very strong agreement here. Um, looks like 98% or so, 97. I know what SJA's reading curriculum is. It's over 75% agreeing, which is great. It's Reader's Workshop, and I'll explain a little bit more about that again towards the end. And then knowing why we chose the reading curriculum, a little less agreement, but still pretty strong, over 75%. Uh, and again, even throughout the summer, we're gonna to try to communicate about why we have the curriculum we have, because I feel like that's important for the parents to understand. And so with the same questions regarding math, they're all over 75% over about knowing what the math curriculum is and why we chose it. Math in our um, curriculum uh, review schedule, we are going to be researching our current math curriculum next year and spend the whole year just kind of analyzing it and making sure it's what we want. Uh, so we'll be asking for parent input on that as well next year. Regarding SJA and, and COVID-19, um, there's one extra question here, but these are the questions we've asked before. So uh, this one is, I agree with the decision to continue virtual learning until June 4th. Over 75% agree with that. 
Uh, we do have about you know twenty percent disagreeing with that for various reasons. So thank you for for the support so far. Um, and and again, this was a tough decision. So we appreciate um, everything you're doing as parents to to finish the year strong, which is in two days, believe it or not. My child has grown in their learning this year. Uh, the response is less than 75%, unfortunately. So um, I know this, the teachers are looking at uh, the results of the year and reflecting on um, how we wanna start next year to, um, to grab the students who maybe did not learn uh, as they typically do and get them accelerated for next year and get them up to speed um, appropriately uh, so they are ready to go. Um, into next year. How pleased are you with the overall learning plan implemented by SJA? So um, very pleased is the purple and uh, green is uh, it's okay. So we're over 50% there. Um, you know, pretty big chunk said it, it could, could it be better, not terrible, but it could be better. About 11% very displeased. Um, a couple of you didn't have an opinion. So uh, again, our teachers, um, worked really hard to, to get um, uh, the best learning experience for your children this year. Uh, and they were, they were learning things new as well. And uh, there's very strong evidence that all the hard work that our teachers did, um, did pay off for the students who attended every day and participated every day in class. Uh, so if, if, if the students were meeting those two basic criteria, there was, there's strong evidence that they were growing and learning. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, there, you know, we, we also acknowledge that um, this was virtual learning maybe wasn't the best um, venue for some kids as well. So again, next, moving into summer school and next year, we're going to be trying to diagnose exactly what our students need so we can serve them in the best way possible. And so re regarding summer school, whether you want your child in summer school or not, we're just trying to get a ballpark figure here. So um, 40 or 63% said no, um, they don't want their children in summer school, uh, which kind of lines up a little bit to um, these numbers here, which is about 60 some percent um, saying that the overall distance learning plan was okay. Um, so that kind of matches up. 17% uh, said that yes, only if it's virtual. So there's still a um, pretty significant group of parents who are uncomfortable uh, bringing their child to school uh, this summer. Um, and then 20% uh, said they, they don't care if it's in person or virtual, they, they want their kid in summer school, which is perfectly understandable as well. And then the last question we asked is, besides the narrative uh, answers, is currently what is your preference as a parent for next year's learning model? And um, uh, the vast majority said in person, so 77% uh, want their child to be here. And 23% uh, want to keep them at home. So we will be asking you this question uh, at least two more times this summer. Um, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if, you know, if these numbers change. Uh, we will be providing a, uh, a virtual option next year, uh, but our goal is to be um, to get, get as many people in person as possible if it's if it's safe to do so. And that's always been our, our um, threshold is the safety of everyone involved. All right, so those are the responses from last week's survey. And I, there's a follow-up slide here. Yeah, so given all of that, um, the, the preparations for next year, I just wanted to articulate out as well. So again, puedes ser, puedes ver los, la información en español a la izquierda aquí. So like I just said, the goal is to have 100% in person, K4 through eighth grade. Uh, but we understand that we may need to offer the virtual option for, for parents. So we're gonna, we've already started, you know, planning for that, op, for that reality. We'll be giving you small updates throughout June and July, um, at least once a week, we'll be sending something out. Uh, and then we, we do have a specific date that the week of June 21st, we're gonna ask you parents, uh, all parents to make a decision. 
so that we have at least a month to uh, prepare class rosters, figure out who's virtual, who's in person. So that'll come out on the week of June 21st. And it'll be right now a simple survey of two questions. Those play with us. Um, do you want your child in person or do you want your child virtual via swivel? Swivel son um, estos robotos, like rob robots, uh, and they, they move, se muevan uh, con un, un iPad. Y pueden ser en casa, you can be in house, at your house, mirando la, la clase en vivo. You can be at your home watching the class live uh, with the teacher so the kid can hear everything the teacher's saying to the in-person students uh, and following them along or following along with them. Uh, so that's how we're going to be tackling um, students who, who wish to be virtual uh, and how they can still access the learning material. And then the second question in that June 21st survey is going to be asking you to teach us about your child. You know your child the best um, and we want to know, we want the information from you and not we here in the office, we do, but your child's teacher next year is going to look at those answers that you provide so they can learn from you about how this experience was for them during this school year because every, every experience is, is, is different. Uh, and we want to give you an opportunity to share um, what worked well for your child, um, what could have been better, what your child is looking forward to uh, being in person again. Uh, all that kind of information will be really helpful for our teachers. Uh, when they come back in August, they can look at all their students in their class and then look at your information that you're providing uh, about your child so they can um, design their lessons and design that first couple of weeks of school as we you know, build our culture up again uh, with in-person and, um, and use the information straight from you as their parents. So really, really important survey um, to fill out and you can look for that in uh, a few weeks. Uh, okay, and then week of July, so then a month later, week of July 26, the due date for communicating updated reopening plan. So we have a reopening committee that's meeting every week and a half or so, about every 10 days, and um, we will articulate our final reopening plan. We have an approved opening plan from the Milwaukee Health Department, um, but as new realities reveal themselves this year or this summer, uh, we will make appropriate adjustments if necessary. Um, and we know that DPI, the, the state, um, uh, Department of Instruction will be releasing some new guidance um, in July about school, about what the school, what schools should do during in the fall. So we will look at that and make adjustments as well. So algunas cosas de nuestra curricula, a few things about our curriculum. Uh, se llama Taller de Leer, Reader's Workshop. Um, and the, the basic model for this um, starts uh, with the mini lesson, which is about 15, 20 minutes, sometimes as short as 10 minutes, but um, that's where the teacher uh, teaches the new skill for the day um, and um, has an engaging activity to kind of um, show, you know, what that new skill is and, and teaches them about it. And then students have an opportunity to practice that skill in class uh, while they're reading the book that they chose. And so um, they have over half of class time to, to actually practice reading. And we feel rather strongly that in order to get better at something, you need to practice doing it. And so um, giving ch kids the chance to practice a new skill, just like it was a sport or athletics or something, practice that new skill while doing that sport or doing that activity with your coach right there, with your teacher right there in the room. And then as the kids are reading, then the teacher takes that time to meet one-on-one -on -one or to meet with small groups um, during that large independent reading time. So they're not just sent off to read blindly. Uh, the teacher is there and working with small groups and, um, and, and providing that assistance uh, throughout the lesson. And then at the end, there's a share out because we know there's value in sharing your new, what you learned, what you, how you applied your, the newly learned skill to your the book that you chose that you're reading 
Uh, and as we know, you learn something really well when you have to teach it. So it's an opportunity for um, kids to experience that each day as well at the end of their lesson. So it's exciting and we actually have a whole lot of new, um, new books coming to the school over the summer that kids will be able to choose from. So pretty excited and we hope that we can, um, that your kids will be uh, renewed in their excitement for reading, being here every day and, and seeing what their friends are reading and seeing the books that their friends are reading, talking about it, having those conversations that were a lot harder to do this year. So we're really excited for that. And then our math curriculum is everyday math. Um, and the, the basic structure here also is, you know, they start up with some warm up activities, the uh, building number sense, basic math skills, addition, multiplication, division, fractions. And, um, and, and so they're preparing for that new content during these warm up activities. Uh, and then the main part of the, the lesson of that particular skill for that day, uh, they apply and explore content through different activities that they design. And then there's review and assessment at the end of the at the end of the lesson. Uh, and this particular curriculum cycles through the skills, and so they'll they'll have a chance to practice um, different math abilities and skills multiple times uh, throughout the unit and throughout the year, uh, instead of just only doing fractions for September and then never doing fractions again. So, um, so yeah, that's our math curriculum, and and again that'll be up for review next year. So, um, time check here, it's 3.22. Tenemos ocho minutos más. Si tienes preguntas, um, pueden uh, uh, usar su voz. You can use your voice now and unmute your mic if you want to uh, ask a question, or you can also use the chat box as well. So, any questions? So no questions. I just want to commend you and your team for the work that you are doing and continue to do, um, navigating through COVID issue as well and being prepared to move forward. So uh, great job, Scott. Thank you, Norm. I appreciate that. Scott, you got to do a game. You got to make everybody say something. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people might be driving. I don't want to cause any car accidents. Uh, <laughs> um. Thank you, Scott, for the update. Sure. I thank appreciate you, it. You're welcome. Okay, why not, Norm? I'll, I'll put Diana to be and Terry on the spot here. Get, leave us with one word uh, for the day. <laughs> no, I just wanted to thank all the parents who are on the call and all the, who end up viewing this afterwards yes, for all yes. that they do just to make uh, St. Joseph Academy a special place that it is and to continue to live out the, the dream of the sisters and, and, and their mission. So just my gratitude from Felician Services and from the board to all of them. Yes, it's been a, a challenging but wonderful year. And Scott, you and your team have done amazing just navigating and the word of the year, I think, is pivot, uh, pivoting through all the, all the, I don't know, uh, everything that has happened. So I appreciate you. Thank you for the updates and your continued um, dedication to SJA. Amen to that word. I love that word, pivot. Um, I feel like we all leaned in a little closer to our purpose and to fulfill our purpose here at SJA. And um, I, it's been a, a growing year. I feel like we've all have grown so much and our parents have been right there with us. Um, and I appreciate all of the support and the leadership has been outstanding. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you to the uh, to everyone who's on on the call as well right now live. Appreciate that, uh, and I understand that sometimes you can't have your your video on or your mics on. But thank you very much. So until July, um, thank you, and we hope to see uh, K five, fifth grade, and eighth grade uh, families 
uh, rolling down the street on 17th Street on Friday morning, 10 a.m. for any time between 10 and 11. Uh, just come on by. All, all SJA staff, including ECE staff who are able to, uh, are going to try to be on the street to celebrate uh, the continuum of our mission here of serving people from six weeks old, as little as six weeks old, all the way to eighth grade. Uh, we're inviting the whole the whole gang out to to celebrate. So it um, should be a fun day on Friday, June 4th. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Well, thank you, Tabia.